Welcome to On Refuge and Bodhicitta, selections of Tibetan Buddhism texts by the venerated Patru Rinpoche, vegetarian, part two of two on words of wisdom. Tibetan Buddhism is a religion with a rich cultural heritage that emerged from a wide range of spiritual practices. These include the complete scope of the Buddha's teachings from the Hinayana, Mahayana, and Vajrayana traditions. Different schools belonging to Tibetan Buddhism today include the Nyingma, founded by the venerated enlightened master Pamasambhava, vegetarian, Kagyu, founded by the venerated enlightened master Talopa, vegetarian, Sakya, founded by the venerated enlightened master Kongcho Gyapo, vegetarian, and his son, the venerated enlightened master Sachen Konga Limpo, vegetarian, and Geluk, founded by the venerated enlightened master Tsongkhapa Nopsam Drakpa, vegetarian. The teachings of Tibetan Buddhism focus on mindfulness of death and the ephemeral nature of life, leading to diligence in meditation and spiritual practice. Mandalas, prayer flags, and Thangka paintings are visual reminders for practitioners on the path. Born in Getsa Chachuka, the nomadic area of the northern Kham region of Tibet in 1808. The venerated Patru Rinpoche, vegetarian, was recognized by the venerated Dojuchen Jigmi Chunne Ozer as the incarnation of Page Santem Pongso, the first Lama Page lineage. Through intense meditation practice in the mountains, forests, and isolated cave hermitages, he attained the highest realization of ultimate reality. The venerated master, Patrol Rinpoche, was a renunciate and revered for his teachings of bodhicitta, or the awakening of wisdom and compassion for all sentient beings. He was also responsible for abolishing the custom of serving animal people flesh at special gatherings. His most prominent work, The Words of My Perfect Teacher, is an explanation of the preliminary practices of the Nyingma school and his teachings catered to all, providing insight to both the wise and novices. Let's continue with selections from An Essential Instruction on Refuge and Bodhicitta by the venerated master, which expounds on the deeper meaning behind taking refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, or the Supreme Assembly. Generating Bodhicitta Generally, there are said to be two levels to Bodhicitta the relative and the ultimate. Relative bodhicitta is the mind that is intent upon attaining perfect enlightenment for the sake of others. And ultimate bodhicitta is the wisdom that directly realizes emptiness. Relative bodhicitta itself can be further divided into aspirational bodhicitta which is like the wish to go somewhere, and the bodhicitta of application, which is like actually making the journey. In both cases, bodhicitta is generated through formal practice, and so it is known as coarse bodhicitta arising from signs. Ultimate bodhicitta only arises through the power of meditating on the path and is therefore known as subtle bodhicitta, which is gained through reality itself. Relative bodhicitta has two points or aspects, compassion, which is focused on sentient beings, and wisdom, 
which is directed towards perfect enlightenment. So it is important that they are both complete. Here in the present context, the generation of aspirational bodhicitta alone has two aspects, focusing on merit, which is the cause, and aspiring towards perfect enlightenment, which is the result. The first of these is covered in the phrase practicing generosity and so on. When all sources of virtue are categorized, they may be included within what is called the three bases for creating merit. These are the creation of merit through generosity, the creation of merit through discipline, and the creation of merit through meditation. When we relate these to the six parameters, the first two relate to the parameters of the same name, and the creation of merit through meditation relates to patience, concentration, and wisdom. Diligence assists them all. These six parameters are also based on specific states of mind. One, generosity is an attitude of giving. Two, Discipline is an attitude of renunciation. Three, patience is an attitude of imperturbability. Four, diligence is an attitude of enthusiasm. Five, concentration is non-distraction. Six, wisdom is the precise discernment of phenomena. The second aspect of aspiring towards the result of perfect enlightenment is covered in the phrase, May I attain Buddhahood for the benefit of all beings. This is the actual bodhicitta endowed with the two points or aspects. For the benefit of all beings is the thought of who we are practicing for and is focusing on sentient beings with compassion. May I attain Buddhahood is longing for what we are practicing towards and is wisdom directed towards complete enlightenment. It is, therefore, the aspirational bodhicitta, which is to think, through all these sources of virtue of mine, may I attain Buddhahood for the benefit of all sentient beings who are as infinite as space. The Precepts of Aspirational Bodhicitta In addition, there are the five precepts of Aspirational Bodhicitta, which are as follows. 1. Never giving up on sentient beings. 2. Continually reflecting on the benefits of Bodhicitta. 3. Exerting yourself in the methods for accumulating merit and wisdom. 4. Applying yourself to the training in bodhicitta. 5. Adopting and abandoning the eight wholesome and unwholesome dharmas. Giving up on just a single sentient being causes you to lose your bodhicitta of aspiration completely, so develop a wish to benefit all beings. Reflecting on its benefits causes you to develop enthusiasm and apply yourself to arousing bodhicitta, so reflect continually on the benefits to be gained from the generation of bodhicitta. Gathering the accumulations increases the strength of your bodhicitta, so accumulate merit and wisdom in various ways, such as the seven-branch practice. The training in bodhicitta has three elements. One, training in the cause by meditating on the four immeasurables. Two, the actual training, which is to practice taking the vow of bodhicitta three times during the day and three times at night. Three, and the training in the precepts, the meditations on equalizing and exchanging yourself and others, and consider others as more important than yourself. The four immeasurables are as follows. 1. Love, which is the wish that all beings who are unhappy may find happiness. 2. Compassion, which is the wish that all who are suffering may be freed from suffering. 
Three, sympathetic joy, which is the wish that those who are happy and free from suffering may never be separated from their happiness. Four, equanimity, which is the wish that those who feel attachment and aversion towards anyone, close or distant, may pacify their attachment and aversion. The actual training in bodhicitta is to take the vow of bodhicitta by means of any formal practice, whether elaborate, medium, or short, at the six times of the day and night, that is, at dawn, mid-morning, midday, afternoon, dusk, and midnight. Equalizing self and others means recognizing the equality of yourself and others in wishing to find happiness and wishing to avoid suffering. Exchanging self and others means giving your own happiness to other sentient beings and taking their suffering upon yourself. Considering others as more important than yourself means setting aside your own benefit and accomplishing the benefit of others. The eight wholesome and unwholesome dharmas consist of four wholesome dharmas to be adopted and four unwholesome dharmas to be abandoned. The four unwholesome dharmas are as follows. One, deceiving anyone worthy of veneration. Two, feeding misplaced regret. Three, abusing a holy person. Four, cheating others. The four wholesome dharmas are as follows. One, being careful never to lie, even at the cost of your life. Two, setting everyone on the path to enlightenment. Three, showing similar respect to bodhisattvas as you would to the Buddha. Four, being honest to all beings. If you apply yourself to these practices, then you will never forget the mind of bodhicitta in all your future lives, and all the qualities of the bhumis and paths will develop and increase like the waxing moon. For more information, please visit lotsawahouse.org. Vegan side effect can't run away from angels. Eco-loving viewers, it's been a delight that you could join us today for Words of Wisdom.